Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. Um, I will be your host today. My name is Richard Faust. I'm Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. My guests today are uh, two individuals. We, we a lot of times will have one, but we're we're kind of uh, we've got two people who are interested in aquatics here in the community. And Hezekiah Allen is the uh, the aquatic supervisor for the City of Cottonwood. Uh, he uh, supervises both the outdoor and the indoor pool facilities. He takes on a lot more than that too, as he has a couple of hats that he. He wears like multiple, uh, most people. Uh, we also have Brendan Kenny uh, with us. He's the assistant coach of the Cottonwood Clippers um, team, and he's also the head coach of Mingus Union High School swim team. So, um, gentlemen, it's good to have you here this morning. Great to be here. Uh, right. It's nice uh, it's March, yep. um, and so <laughs> it's rather interesting. Spring comes, and mm -hmm. our pools open up here in Arizona. It's just kind of that way, and so with that sequence, it's. Uh, it's kind of wonderful to see because then we see the activity of children and that's kind of our mainstay of what we do and who we are as we look forward to that and I, I remember even as a child uh, growing up in Iowa and uh, Brendan you're uh, you're definitely from the Kansas area yep. has you're from Ohio and yep. so we always waited for that time period when the pools opened so I think that that's the, the uh, a lot of it with the same thing with children today uh, we haven't changed much um, <laughs> Uh, the one thing I wanted to kind of go over a little bit is over the last three years, um, just a little bit of project update and project management that mm -hmm. the city's taken on. And I know that probably this was brought about last year, Hez, when you were uh, you were involved with things mm -hmm. uh, in, in coming to Inside Cottonwood. But um, the outdoor pool has received a major facelift about three years ago. And uh, we originally a six lap lane pool from in reality, 1982 through 2010, yeah. and we were unable to hold meets, uh, really, um, because it wasn't um, AIA certified or appropriate, if, I, if, if I'm getting my terms correct there. Mm -hmm. But the city council decided to invest in children in the community, and, and they, they uh, put in $1.2 million to expand the pool to make it an eight-lane certified pool. Brendan, um, what, is, what does that mean to you, uh, changing from a six-lane pool to an eight-lane lap pool? First and foremost, the facility is an incredible facility. Um, in comparison with a lot of the other northern Arizona um, high schools and the competitions that we've been to, uh, we definitely, I believe, have the best aquatics facility for competitive swimming mm -hmm. in northern Arizona, hands down. Um, I think that Everything that has been done now allows us to host more, as you said, AIA state qualifying meets. Uh, there's one in, pl in the works for next season, mm -hmm. um, hosting a Northern Arizona qualifying meet, um, if at all possible. And I think just the benefit to the youth in the community is a wonderful thing. Uh, the involvement, the Clippers numbers are rather large, and uh, I think that will progress through to the high school swim team as well. So. It's just fantastic for the youth of the community to have that opportunity mm -hmm. um, competitively. Arizona, in and of itself, is a wonderful state for competitive swimming, uh, top to bottom, youth through high school, and so it's great to have that. That's Definitely. great. That's neat. Hez, I'll, I'll expand there to you also. Yeah. What does that mean to you, um, going from that? I know when we built the pool, mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it had to be down to the, a, a fraction um, in order for timed relay events which right. means that it's it's really um, uh, it, it has to be really a qualified pool. But but what does that mean to you in taking care of the pool, but mm -hmm. also for children's activities and things throughout the year? Well, just to echo kind of what you guys have said, the council has definitely made an investment in this facility and in the youth of the area. And when you walk through the doors, you see that from the shade structures to the bleachers to every piece, there was no expense spared, um, and and it's amazing. Um, and just to reiterate what Brendan said about being a, a qualified facility to host meets, if you look at the Phoenix area, that's kind of where a lot of them are held, and correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Most definitely. Northern Arizona, there was not really a place for a meet to be held. So they were having to travel every time that they wanted to compete at that level. So this has really been a benchmark facility for Northern Arizona, and we're, we're proud to have it. 
So this b b really kind of puts Cottonwood on the map then for Definitely. the future. And in reality, pools last normally from you know 20 to 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, so our hope is is that that's one of the things that will transpire. We'll keep the pool up and keep it going for prosperity's sake. Yeah. Um, but there's also plans here, and we'll may maybe get into that here after our break. But um, as to you know maybe some additional plans for the outdoor pool. Yeah. And, and uh, we can maybe take a look at that, and you guys can talk about that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Brenda, tell us what you see um, as the vision and direction uh, for the Cottonwood Clippers swim team in the future. Um, clearly, I think you know the idea is to build the program to get as many of the youth in the community to be involved. I know that you said at the beginning, as kids, we all look forward to the pool opening in the summer yep. and going in. A lot of times you see the pool opening and you definitely go with your friends and hang out and everything, but it's nice to be involved on a competitive swim team as well. And I think that's a, you know, it, it builds a foundation for the youth of the community. It allows them to understand a competitive environment to be with their friends and hang out. It allows them to start a path on lifelong fitness yeah. and really to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. to be a healthy person. And swimming is one of the best activities that you can do at any age. Yeah. You can continue to swim Full body workout. as long as you would like to. Yeah. And I think that the goal for the Clippers organization is to get as many of the youth involved in the community as we can, to be a place for them to come, to have fun. We have some very youthful, exuberant coaches, uh, wonderful infrastructure in place through our um, board officers. And I think that uh, we just want to allow and provide a place for kids to come, have fun, hang with their friends, and compete with other communities around northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to state it. Um, uh, you know, as we, uh, I was going to ask you in reality also what inspires you about working with youth of these ages and uh, I, I, we were talking a little bit before him before the show started and you know one of the things I always remember and, and everybody knows John Tavasi and, and um, uh, I remember here in 1990 when I came here um, that John Tavasi was definitely a person who who was an incredible teacher, but also principal and then superintendent. And John always indicated it, it's this is for the kids. And you know I think that that's one thing that's just been um, an, an incredible you know um, uh, idea as well as an ideology for anyone to have. And and I think that you know you and your same circumstances you have identified that so this is kind of an inspiration for you then is to watch these kids grow I think in that context of things oh sure I think you know most yeah. definitely we both work a lot with the youth of the community and it's so much fun to see the new things that they come up with. the way their perspective of life yeah, is so different to, to always be able to see the world as a kid is pretty mm -hmm. cool so it's nice kind of, you know, cathartically seeing it through their eyes, everything yeah. they see, you know. Right. They get fascinated by some of the bubbles, you know, going across the pool right. and different things. <laughs> so fun. it's but, yeah. just great to be around them. Then they the pull out their iPhone and you're like, what is that? How did you <laughs> just do that? Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive to see and it's growth. Right. In every aspect and every function of the way they're growing, whether it's through exercise, through real, re, relating to other children, mm -hmm. um, to relating to their parents and their parents seeing them grow. And that's what it's all about. Well, has you also, I think uh, you, you just recently you, you had received an award from the city council mm -hmm. and for, you know, your, uh, your input as well and, and a lot to do with the city um, uh, uh, youth Commission and yeah. the Youth Commission program and mm -hmm. so you carry a lot of the same ideologies and, and philosophies than exactly what what Brendan has and yep. so it's interesting you guys are really close in age and it's mm -hmm. rather interesting to see that come out in both of you as you uh, you know you aspire uh, to work with youth and so I think that my question is is um, you know do, do you see that uh, these kids are up for the challenge for the future I think more so than past generations. Mm -hmm. um, like we just spoke about technology, they're already so far beyond advanced than we were uh, as a child. And you know, I remember in my generations, we were just getting into the computers. And then the C kids and now, you know, Brandon and you'll have kids for four years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with the Youth Commission, we have them from eighth grade to high school. So we get to see that transition and the, for them to grow through all those years 
and through some pretty challenging experiences, you know. Yeah. Being a swimmer is a challenge. Being yes. on the Youth Commission is a challenge, and, and when we hold no bards and making that known to each one of them. But if they step up to the challenge, it's going to set them up for life. Right, and I think that that's the thing is that we, we look at it in that context. Um, we're going to be taking a short break at this point in time, um, and uh, uh, thank you for joining us with Inside Cottonwood uh, this morning. Again, I'm your host, uh, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager, and we'll be talking again a little bit more as we uh, break things out a bit as to uh, Brendan's work with both the high school team and a little bit more about the Clippers here as we move forward um, with Brendan Ken uh, Kenny and then also with Hezekiah Allen, Supervisor for uh, the Aquatic Center for uh, the Parks and Recreation Department. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, uh, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And um, with us today uh, is uh, Brendan Kenny. Brendan is the assistant uh, uh, coach for the Cottonwood Clippers and the coach for the Mingus Union High School swim team. And also we have with us Hezekiah Allen, and mm -hmm. Hez is the Aquatic Center um, supervisor and kind of manages things over at the Cottonwood Recreation Center as well as the outdoor pool associated with aquatics programming. Um, so thank you gentlemen again here for being with us today. Mm -hmm. um, Brendan, I've, I've got a question for you here and tell me a little bit about yourself and, and how you became associated with the Clippers program and give us your background on why you started in this type of youth program. Sure. Um, first of all, uh, I became associated with the Clippers through uh, Mingus Union High School, becoming the head swim coach there. And obviously I was looking to uh, transition to the summer program as well so that I can be a part of the whole competitive swim culture with the youth in the community. As far as myself, I grew up in Kansas for the most part, did travel around a bit, lived in a few different places. My father was a welder, so we did move around a little bit and um, began swimming at seven competitively. I had always been around the pool, always been around water. Uh, we had wind surfboards and a sailboat growing up, so we were always at the lake. And swam competitively through high school. Uh, through high school, I also worked in aquatics, uh, lifeguarding, teaching swimming lessons, uh, managing aquatics facilities, and attended the University of Kansas. At the University of Kansas, I worked at the recreation center they had there and the aquatics facility that we had in Lawrence. And Continued there for a few years after college as well <laughs> until about three years ago when I moved down here and started working at schools uh, Worked at CMS initially and now I do work up at Mingus Union High School and Just excited to be in such a great community. There's so many outdoor opportunities. That's really the reason that uh, I moved out here was the outdoor opportunities and everything that provides uh, it's nice being from Kansas living in an area with mountains, looking out the window every day, right. seeing mountains. We have yeah. a, a beautiful uh, place to live and a great community. And it's nice to be working with the youth in the community. I think we have, um, in reality, some of the best programs in all of Northern Arizona. In fact, um, I know even with Mingus Union High School and their program format and what they do is the same thing we try to do. We try to be the best at what we can be and um, our staff uh, with Hez and with Ryan Bigelow um, and then all of our people who are the backbone of, of our community resources that we, that we, uh, um, we rely upon. Mm -hmm. um, we provide excellent services all across the board. So I know at Mingus, you know, it's one of those things um, that excellence is part of the Mingus Union High School yes. you know, uh, format and what they provide in both academics and then also in sports. And do you see that growing here? You know, I mean, again, there's a lot of young, young individuals who are coaching. 
uh, that are school teachers now. And yes. um, there's a, there's a, I think there's a great future here as we, we start to see Cottonwood grow again. I certainly think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read around and follow up on things, and I know uh, we were considered, you know, the Verde Valley and Cottonwood specifically as one of the bigger kind of destinations for people to come and visit. And I think that's only going to help the community grow. Mm -hmm. We already have a lot of, like you said, the infrastructure and everything that we need. And I think people just need to see it. Uh, people need to come here and visit, and then everyone, uh, you know, will kind of fall in love with the community. We have great yeah. people in the community, we, from the youth to the adults, and it's just wonderful to be a part of something like that. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that one of the things that we've, um, we've enjoyed as a family, my family's been pretty much raised here for the last 23 years, and, and um, we've invested time in, in our, our children and the youth within our community by being coaches and various mm -hmm. things. But I know one of the things that the Clippers definitely is a seed uh, program for Mingus Union High School. Um, we, we have an incredible baseball program here, um, mm -hmm. wrestling program, football program. And again, there's all of the seed programs that are, you know, with the High Desert Youth Ball Football Association. The Little League program here is very uh, dynamic and, and functions very well in that capacity. The Clippers is one of the most um, effective that I've mm -hmm. seen. And, um, you know, as we look forward to Mingus Union High School and, and um, what that provides, I think, in, in, the, in the, the way of swim team programming, uh, these Clippers kids are really dynamic. They get out yes. there and they get it done, which then provides the same format then for the Mingus swim team. Mm -hmm. So if I'm correct there, I, I think that that's what this does. And uh, let me, let's, let's branch in a little bit here as to, you know, how many kids do you have in the, the Clippers swim team? Generally, um, initially at registration, we get about 80 to 85 kids that initially register on registration day. Uh, the first day of practice, we have quite a few more that tend to come. The past few seasons, we've had about 120 kids uh, at the end of the season. So, and that's between the ages of 7 to 18. How many of those kids then do you see then continue on into the Mingus program? I mean, is there kind of a percentage there? I don't necessarily know. Uh, if there's a percentage, s swimmers are definitely wired a little bit differently. Uh, and especially the high school age kids. They get up all summer long at 6 in the morning, get in the water every day. And with that commitment, they see the results, so they come in to the program. And we had this past season a little over 35 kids on the Mingus Union swim team, which was a very large number. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was great to see that. And we hope that that continues to build. Uh, and we certainly think that it will. I think that's great. So are there requirements or qualifications for someone who wants to get onto the team or are there any age restrictions? What are those? Sure. Um, you must be seven years old to be seven or older to be on the Cotland Clippers team. You have to have completed four levels of swimming lessons and you must be able to swim across the pool unassisted um, yourself. There's a two-week trial period that you come in and you kind of are evaluated, especially if you're on the younger end of the spectrum. And we kind of just see where you're at and watch uh, your abilities and everything. So there's kind of a broad range then, and so mm -hmm. uh, the, the kids are basically divided into age groups. Um, Correct. Okay. Yes. And so it's not just on how well they perform in one area, but it is actually age group centered then. Yes. And the okay. competitions are that way as well. You know, the competitions have different age levels that you compete against, so you're never competing against far older kids or anything. Okay, because so. I think that that's what some people are concerned about yeah. when they, they're sitting there, they're going, well, I don't want my eight-year-old to be, swim, you know, yeah. swimming with yeah. a teenager who's going to just, you know, rip them as they're going uh -huh. across the water. So I think that that's definitely sure. something mm -hmm. that a lot of parents then consider. Um, I think we're, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and, and take another break here. And um, again, um, uh, welcome to Inside Cottonwood. My name is Richard Faust. I'm your host today. We'll get back with, uh, with um, uh, Brendan Kenny here in a, in a minute here as we go on into the Clippers a little bit more and, and some of the information about the Verde Valley Invitational and what the VVI stands for. What do you do? And what do you, how, do you, how do you do your raising of funds and things? And then we'll maybe hit a little bit more with Hezekiah as we close then. So Sounds great. thank you for joining with us. Please come back.
Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host today, Richard Faust, Community Services General Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And we have uh, Brendan Kenny with us today, uh, who we're talking with as it pertains to the Cottonwood Clippers. He's the Mingus Union High School coach and the assistant coach for the Cottonwood Clippers. And also has, uh, has Allen, who is also our aquatics uh, supervisor for the Recreation Center. Has I got a question here for you right off the bat. It was yeah. something we, we talked about a little bit in uh, the break here. Mm -hmm. um, there was one thing that the, the Clippers, um, they are very de decisive about, you know, how they um, uh, they want the, the pool. Yep. Um, and they saw that the timing system was definitely, there was a need there. Mm -hmm. Can you expound upon that for us as to what transpired there and what they did? Sure. Uh, when the facility was being designed, and like we kind of touched on previously, the goal is to hold meets and meets at a professional level. With that in mind, you need a timing system. Uh, the, the Clippers kind of president at that time had partnered with VVMC in a way to help fund to get that timing unit uh, and then they went out to bid and had companies install it. Uh, I do know that when the process came around and maybe you know this Brendan maybe not to, to train people on the on the facility and how to use a timing system a, a, a lot of eyes were opened like, wow, this is in-depth, <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? Yeah. So it's exciting when you walk into the facility, and not only do we have a great swim team, we have a swim team who's dedicated to this community and the facility, and they keep making more strives to make it better. It's, it's like I said, it's exciting. And Brandon, yeah. maybe you want to expound on how the system works and, and the little key components. Sure. Uh, the system, basically, it is touch pads that are set up at the wall. Um, when the race begins uh, when the starting whistle basically goes off uh, the kids enter the water and each time they touch that touch pad depending upon the race it transmits that to the scoreboard so you can see their splits up on the nice scoreboard that we have in positions one through eight so in any of the eight lanes you can watch your child and you can watch what their split is on a 50 of whatever stroke it may be. And then when they come into the wall, it obviously rings their time right up on the board, and then it also puts their place up on the board. Mm -hmm. So it's immediate results. It is you know, the, the same type of system that you see at all the qualifying meets, that you see at the state meets, that you would see if you were watching you know, the Olympics uh, swim uh, is it, competitions. Is it a whistle or a gun? Uh, it's, it's a trigger that you pull, it pool. sounds more <laughs> like it sounds more like a more like a whistle. A yeah. Bit. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I would a, start swimming. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a it's a uh, expensive piece of technology mm -hmm. that's very very highly intricate, and um, you know it's uh, it's what the the the, uh, the the big schools utilize. So it was mm -hmm. rather impressive to see that um, uh, Verde Valley Medical Center came on board yes. with the Clippers in order to get this and actually. Um, improvise and put it into place, install it, and then train people on how to utilize it properly. So yeah, yep. um, it, this is a uh, really involved community all the way around. And so mm -hmm. when we see the um, uh, the community collaborating and partnershiping together, it's really a unique formula. It's and exciting. it's really exciting to see. And, mm -hmm. and I yeah. really think that that's great. This is part of what we do here for the kids. Yeah. And it is, it's really kind of a, a tremendous program. Um, uh, Brendan, talk to us a little bit about um, you know the the Verde Valley Invitational. You know what does that sure. mean? What is it? What takes place at it? Um, you know, is this a focus type of a program for you? What does it involve? And uh, so expound on that for me. Uh, the Verde Valley Invitational is a very big deal for the Clippers. Uh, we're very proud to have it. This season will be the 32nd consecutive VVI. Jeez. It began in 1981. Right. Um, it is the end of the season competition for a lot of the northern Arizona uh, summer swim teams. It 
has about six or seven teams that are invited every year. Included in those teams are Sedona, Payson, Prescott, Kingman, uh, Lake Havasu, Needles, and Bullhead City. So we do draw people from uh, who travel quite a distance to come here. Again, I think it speaks volumes to the facility that we have. And it's great because, as we stated earlier, it brings people to the community. They get to see Cottonwood. They get to see kind of the surrounding area. Uh, you know, we have um, between 80 and 90 events that uh, go on during the competition. And there's six different age groups. So as we said earlier, you know, you don't have eight-year-olds competing with 18-year-olds right. swimming across the pool. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, master swimmers, which is adults that can compete as well. So as it's just a wonderful thing to have for the area for Northern Arizona. It's great to have it here. And it, it really shows off the facility and the community that we have, I think, incredibly well. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really neat. Now, as the, as the host community, mm -hmm. how well do we do? We do really well. We obviously, as I said, we have about 120 kids that end up on our team. That's a pretty good size swim team, especially yes, for the area. So we have, for that competition, you can win an individual high points. And that goes on for a lot of different competitions. So as an individual, you can accumulate the most points for your team and you get a trophy. We've had several swimmers that have won that, um, as well as generally uh, being at the top team point-wise, because swimming is it's an individual sport with a team concept. So you compete individually in a lot of uh, d separate races, but you always are scoring points for your team. And so at the end, you calculate all the team points, and it's really exciting to hear at the end the announcement of the team scores because sometimes it can be rather close. And uh, once you hear who got second place, you kind of know, you know, who who, who, got, who was the champion. That's so, right. Man. And the Clippers, that's right. yeah. uh, the Clippers definitely um, defend their home pool very well. Good. The EBI. It's good to hear. I, I, I know that every year, um, you know, we're right next door, so on these Saturday <laughs> events or whatever, but they're, they're actually, um, it takes, it takes a, a weekend to actually put this on and then mm -hmm. actually uh, close it down. Mm -hmm. But um, we're very proud of the Clippers and what they do. And then tell us a little bit real quick about the, the Clippers uh, coaching staff for us. Who are these people and, sure. um, you know, what do they do? What are their qualifications? Uh, let's see, the coaching staff, the head coach is Daniel Navarez. Um, he swam at Mingus Union High School. Uh, he has been a coach for the past few years of the Clippers. He is an extremely energetic, outgoing person. Uh, this year he will be coaching the A-team, so he will coach the high schoolers in the morning, uh, as well as serving as the head coach um, for the whole group. Um, I myself will be coaching the B team, which is more middle school age kids. Uh, you know, certainly trying to also drum up some interest for the high school program um, and get those kids to really, you know, enjoy uh, what they're doing every day in the water. The A prep team, which is kids who are just about ready for the A level program. The coach will be Jamie Adams. She also swam at Mingus Union High School and she Great. now attends University of Arizona, uh, but she will be coming back to help. And I think she worked at, as a lifeguard at the pool mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then the C team coach, which is our beginning kids, is Laura McKean, who swam for Mingus Union High School as well, uh, grew up a swimmer. and. Uh, one of the assistants is Katie Williams, who has swam with the Clippers for the past few years. Uh, all of our coaches have past swim experience. Um, all of them have competed themselves in swim and then coached for uh, a few years uh, with the youth in the community. So. That's incredible. And it's really good to see um, these people coming back and yeah. putting their energy back into the community, but back into the youth of the community. So who, um, you know, as we wrap things up here, um, who, who do we contact if our child's interested? And um, what are those costs and stuff? But if, do you have a phone number? I think there's been one also on the, you know, this, that's gone up on the screen, but oh, what okay. is that phone number? Uh, I definitely have a website. Okay, a website. Uh, yeah, it's cottonwoodclippers.webs.com. And that is the main website for the team. It's a 
It's a fantastic website. It has a contact us link. And when you click on that link, it shows all of the board members for the Clippers. Um, Christine Solis is the president of the Cottonwood Clippers. Um, some of our other board officers. The vice president is Robin Warner. The secretary is Christy Delaney. And the treasurer is Beth Fangman. Um, so you can contact any one of those people, and they'll uh, help you out. Get you get yourself set up. Get your young swimmer set up. That's yeah. great. That's good news. So again, we're we're here today as we're promoting health and a healthy lifestyle and fitness for families and community, um, but our kids. And I think this is very essential as we look forward to why our recreation center was built mm -hmm. and then also why our outdoor pool was expanded and what we can do there together. Um, I just want to thank you both for being here and joining us today. Thank you for um, also joining us here on uh, Inside Cottonwood. So thank you for um, uh, giving us the information that we need as parents. And, and um, so um, uh, again, we would like to thank uh, uh, Brendan Kenny. Uh, who is the uh, the Mingus Union High School swim team coach and the assistant uh, Clippers coach and Hezekiah Allen uh, mm -hmm. for your time today. So thank you again very much. And again, my name is Richard Faust. I'm host of the, uh, the program today. And uh, if you would like to contact us in any way, shape, or form, you can contact us also at the Recreation Center. So uh, enjoy your day. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. you.